welcome, um, welcome back. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to cover finishing your your video primarily. And by finishing, um, the three topics that I'm going to dive into is sharpening. The second is um, straightening curves where you've got um, obvious distortion through uh, due to the fisheye lens. And then the third is applying vignettes. And I'll just show you a few tricks and traps that you can fall into when applying vignettes. So let's start with sharpening. Um, if you recall in the last lesson, we color graded our image. Um, so it's now, uh, you know, all looking pretty good. The colors look fantastic. Um, but if you recall the settings for my different cameras, if you look at the GoPro settings, you'll see that they are not only shot in flat color profile, but they're shot in low sharpening which means that if I'm comparing, say, a drone shot like this, where it's sharpened in the drone, to a GoPro shot like this, the GoPro can just look a little bit, um, a little bit sort of soft. So we need to apply the sharpening back in. To do that, um, in my effects, I just use a very simple sharpen um, effect. So if you just search for sharpen, or you look under video effects, blur and sharpen, you'll find sharpen there. If I drag that onto my clip, you'll see over here, it just applies the sharpen um, amount. And it's just got a very simple, um, you know, slider. Now to set that, I recommend that you, you make sure this is on full resolution. Uh, you can turn off your proxies. And I'll t again, I'll talk more about proxies later on. And now you can actually make sort of the right decisions. Um, so if I kind of crank up over sharpen this, right, you'll still see what I mean here. It's sort of that's over sharpened. So before, after, okay. Um, if we turn up even more, let's just go pause, uh, pause resolutions full. Um, so I love this section. you can see it's that's clearly over sharpened. There's halos and sharpening artifacts all over the place um, there. The space. So what we're trying to do is we're really just trying to find the right sharpening amount. And usually I usually start off with about 100 so and um, and that it's usually gets me pretty close. So maybe it's because I'm from Australia. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The so th so that's how I apply sharpening. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, sometimes I will adjust that if it looks like it's it's been over sharpened. Again, you can just put in if you're working on something, you can apply an in um, and an out, and then you can just say loop playback, uh, and then it will just keep Australia. playing it while you adjust the sharpening amount. So you can drop it. Such a or you can crank Maybe it up because I'm from Australia. and you're just trying to get something that looks sharp without it having any sharpening artifacts like those sort of halos around the outside so I, I think so, somewhere around a hundred tends to work quite well for me okay um, now when I'm doing go follow GoPro footage like this there's a sort of technique that I saw by a guy called i think his name's mike on bikes and um what he did is he applied a mask to that sharpening so he basically said i'm not going to apply the sharpening everywhere i'm just going to apply it in the center so he he used a circular mask and i kind of like this and i do this now on most of my videos he opened this up quite a lot and then he applied the feather so if you pull this sort of outer ring across, that sort of um, that's basically the transition between sharp and unsharp. So he created something like this, and now what that means is when you're when you're applying the sharpening, it was such a you're getting full sharpening straight. here and no sharpening around the edge and it's very subtle you, you can almost barely you can't see the transition but it means that for this type of follow footage your eyes is drawn more into the center of the image because it's actually unsharpened around the edge so if you look at that image 
you can see it's definitely softer here than it is here so when I create um, when I create a sharpening effect like that what you can do is if you highlight um, sharpen and right click it says save preset so you can save that preset um, and I've actually got two presets that are saved that I saved so one of them one of them says all over sharpening 100 and the other one says center only sharpen so these presets make it very fast to actually apply the sharpening so if I if I look at this I can make it just make a decision so I can actually say right I'm gonna put center only sharpening on that one there which means it's softened it's that's sharp but the edges are soft and then once I've got that if I have a look at uh, center only sharpening there it is I can now copy that and down here let's um, let's just go through and zoom in I can just come through and remember I'm only applying it to my GoPro footage so it's, it's the ones that are colored blue so if I look at that um, okay that's got the sharpening applied I can go to I can go to my next one yes I want that so I just go command V and that's now sharpened up uh, yeah and then I can go to the next one yes command V next one command V next one command V next one command V, uh, v. next one okay I've already applied the center sharpening for that one so that's good next one now this one um, this one it's sort of oh yeah and no, I'd still probably do that there because I'm, I'm still following along on the camera center sharpening for that um, and then let's have a look at this yes center sharpening there yes center sharpening there uh, yes uh, now this one this one let me undo that so here's an example where if I play if I just play that Oh, it's, it's, it's still playing my in and out so if I just clear clear in and out and turn off my looping let's go back to that yeah so if I play this the image is actually still and they're coming towards me now in that sort of one I'd probably just put sharpening everywhere so I would go to my all over sharpen and I would drag that on so if I'm following someone on a GoPro and I've got the, 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 the scenery flying past me then I would use center sharpening but if, if I want that whole scene to be sharp then I'll use all over sharpening so look at that. okay so this one is center sharpening so command V and again over here you can see center sharpening is applied um, this one center sharpening there uh, this one yep I'd also probably just do center sharpening there um, writing into Jarbridge now here the writing is really slow so I probably just sharpened the whole the whole image on that one so I'll do all over sharpening and that's it I've now applied my sharpening everywhere um, so hopefully uh, that just shows you how I use the two different sharpening techniques and and again the only difference between those is the center only sharpen has a circular um, feathered mask which constrains my sharpening to the center so that is um, sharpening next thing I want to do I want to talk about vignettes and I'm just going to flip into um, one of my other projects so let's just go into my Idaho project okay now in my Idaho project um, I've got my master edit here let's, see, let's have a look here so let's have a look at the, if you have a look at how I've edited this you can see that each day of my Idaho trip is a separate sequence so I could if I want to have a look at for example day five I can double click on that that sequence and here's day five and I can actually I can actually have a look at um, that whole day of writing is its own sequence okay then I've got day six again it's its own separate standalone sequence day seven the same day eight you'll see is widescreen so 
So this was the one where I shot it in widescreen rather than four by three, then 16 by nine. And then I use another sequence to bring them all in together. So this one's called Master Edit Part Two. Now, if you have a look at it, this is where I brought in, I brought in the, the day four, the day five, the day six, the day seven, and the day eight together. And that creates my final output. Now, to, to, to put the finishing vignette on, I normally apply the vignette to an adjustment layer. So I will, if I go into my edit mode, um, I will typically bring up my Idaho project. So I'll, I'll usually say new adjustment layer, say okay. And then I'll bring that adjustment layer onto the project. Zoom in, widen it up, okay. And then to that adjustment layer, I can actually add whatever I want, okay. So I can add in um, vignetting, etc. Now, that works fine. I'm just going to put this one down a bit. So for day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, uh, and day seven, that's exactly what I did. So I added the adjustment layer in, and then I went to my uh, effects and I said, right, I want to apply Lumetri color and I dragged that onto the adjustment layer. Now, in the Lumetri color, it, it's actually got, these are the, the adjustments we saw before, basic correction, creative where I can apply my LUT, etc. Th the bottom section is called vignette. And this is basically where you can adjust that vignette. So if I just click anywhere here, all right, and I and I have a look at this vignette. So if I crank it up, there's a really dark vignette, and that's a sort of a white vignette, which is the opposite. If I get rid of the feather for a second, so if I take that feather to zero, all right, you actually see what's going on here with the vignette. So um, so that's kind of like the strength of the vignette. And then you've got the blurriness around the around the vignette, okay? And usually that the default for that is around about 50. I usually set the vignette around about minus 0.9 to minus one. And with a vignette, you don't want it to be so obvious that it's kind of like in your face. You actually don't want, you don't want um, the viewer to even notice the vignettes there. So if I play it, they're just not even seeing the vignette, but but if you if you t flip it on and off, so if I go um, if I just turn off the visibility here, off on, let's go to another scene. Let's just find a, a just a good scene. Okay, so here, so if we go off on, it, it, when you're flicking it on and off, you can see it's quite noticeable. But you don't want you don't want it to be so strong that um, everyone looks and goes, oh, overly vignetted. So usually minus 0.9, sometimes minus one. That's kind of usually where I run it. Now, one of the problems you get is when you bring in um, when you bring in the widescreen. Let's just put that back to fit. So so again, if I just uh, I just get rid of the feather. You'll see that vignette's applied sort of quite nicely. That's how a vignette should be applied. The circle's in the middle of the screen. Here's the problem. If I extend that vignette to day eight, which is widescreen, look at what happens. Um, the, the vignette's sort of chopped off, so the vignette hasn't really been applied properly. So what I do there is I actually, in this case, I've only applied the vignette to the 16 by nine, um, videos and in my day eight I've applied the vignette to that one so if we go into let's go into um, the Idaho and let's go into day eight widescreen sequence um, okay so there's the vignette here so I've applied in this one I've actually applied the vignette to that sequence because it's a different aspect ratio so if i turn that feathering down to down to there 
now that vignette has been applied properly because it's it, it's in two by one panorama as opposed to the 16 by nine okay so i'd like to just demonstrate um the third sort of thing that i do when i'm polishing my clips is if i have shot with a wide lens okay um, now in gopro you can set um, a linear lens or wide um, if you shot with a wide lens and which is my setting when i'm in four by three mode then you often will get this type of effect look at the trees especially on the right hand side as they get near the edge see how they kind of they bend and what you're looking at there is just classic um, fisheye distortion now you know maybe that doesn't bother you but it, it sort of does bother me a bit so let's just make that uh, full full width so there's a pretty simple way of fixing it um, if you go into your filters so go into your effects and there is an effect there which is called um, lens distortion so if you grab that and just apply that onto the trees or onto the clip um, it's got a very simple so here are the the effects the adjustments for lens distortion and one of them is curvature now if you just just grab that so around about looks like around about minus 20 is probably going to fix that totally so now if I play it okay so this is after and you're not seeing that bending around the outside again so what I'll do is I'll turn it I'll turn it off there's a sort of that bending effect and then I'll turn it on straightens it up um, so you only need to apply that if you're shooting with a wide lens and if it's bothering you but if it's bothering you and it does bother me that very simple apply a lens distortion um, effect with a, a correction of around about minus 20 and all of your curved trees let's see if we can just find a yeah like, like these these curves around around the side all of that is gone and you get straight trees so that's the third way that I will um, often finish my images before I export. So hopefully you, have, you found a few tips there for sharpening, how to apply vignettes properly, and, um, and also for um, straightening fisheye distortion. And I do put, um, I do put vignettes on all of my, um, all of my uh, clips for finishing. 